What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be doing a quick comparison video, a little off the cuff video, between the Beretta APX and the SIG M18. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters, thank you guys very much. You wanna join up and be a patron, all you gotta do is go down to the link in the description below, click that link and join up. We do exclusive content over there and I try to answer all your guys' gun questions when I get a chance. Also, a link in the description for a local shelter I like to support, so please click that link and donate to those kits. The SIG M18 and the Beretta APX actually have a lot in common. It's kind of a weird comparison, but they're both very interesting, very effective Glock alternatives. Both of them were introduced to military contract. I believe the SIG M18, M17 obviously won the contract. I have the APX Centurion here and the M18, which have a little bit of a capacity difference, but other than that, very similar. Both nine millimeter pistols, both polymer frame, both striker fired. The APX has a 3.7 inch barrel, the M18 has a 3.9 inch barrel. They both have chassis systems in them, so they're both extremely modular. If you wanted to buy different grips or different slides, all you would have to do is just buy the $50 grip online for either of them and replace the actual firearm, which is the serialized part inside the system here. They both have a little chassis system in them that is actually the gun, so you can put them in whatever grip you want. You don't have to worry about buying another firearm like you would a Glock lower, for example. So it makes them pretty modular and it gives them a lot of interesting perks, like if you were in a different state, let's say, where you couldn't purchase a lot of firearms, this would be a good way to go. Also. Uh, if you've seen things like the uh, flex defense brace system that you can put this chassis into, that's pretty unique as well. So overall, it gives you a little bit more modularity than a regular pistol. This doesn't have back straps, but it comes with different size grips. This one has back straps, making it pretty modular. They're both ambi, which is really nice as well. So they'd both be a really good uh, platform for left-handed shooters. The M18 system actually has a red dot system mounted into it for the Romeo and for the Leopold Delta Point, I believe, so that's kind of nice. The Beretta APX also comes with standard metal three dot sights, which is good, but it's not as good as the tritium night sights that the uh, SIG M18 comes with. Now, I have a problem with the SIG M18 M17 uh, 320 series of rear sight. I just don't like how they have the big fat ears, and I know a lot of people agree with me, however some don't. But I would argue that either way, having night sights is probably a better feature than not. Although, to be honest with you, I would actually rather take these sights. I'm actually a little bit more accurate with these personally, and I found myself a little bit more accurate with the Beretta uh, APX overall. Now that's a quality budget gun right there. The triggers seem very similar in pull, reset, and uh, uh, poundage, but for some reason I found myself hitting at a much higher percentage with the Beretta APX. Now, in all fairness, if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that the 320 series in me don't vibe all that well, although for some reason I've never really diagnosed why. But I can tell you that for accuracy goes, at least for me, the Beretta APX was significantly more accurate than the M18. Now you're gonna have some features on the M18 that you won't have on the Beretta APX. Number one is going to be a uh, slide mounted safety there, or a frame mounted safety there. So if you don't want the manual safety, they make 320 series without it, just don't get the M18. Magazine release works really well in both guns. 
slide release works really well. I actually kind of prefer the SIG slide release because it's tucked in there right behind the safety, just like on the 226. So I don't find myself riding it and not going to slide lock. Whereas the Beretta APX kind of sits right where I want to put my thumb and right where I wrench down. And uh, sometimes that will affect the slide lock on the pistol when it goes dry, just like a Glock. I do a very similar thing with the Glock. I prefer the takedown lever on the M18 a little bit. Also, they make aftermarket gas pedals, uh, uh, takedown levers, which is pretty cool. I mean, why not have that if it doesn't take up much more space? Both of them have Picatinny rails, although I can s tell you that the, the M18 does look slightly more high quality up close as far as like the, the uh, uh, frame and stuff goes. And the finish is obviously uh, uh, flat dark earth on this. However, the finish is coming off on mine uh, quite a bit. This has never even seen a holster and it's already missing a ton of finish. Whereas the APX uh, looks kind of cheaper, but I can tell you that the the uh, finish appears to be holding up better for some reason. So this does have a textured spot here for your thumb, which is kind of cool. Uh, the texture on the Beretta APX frame is significantly better than the M18. The M18 is actually not bad. It's not the worst texture I've ever felt. And the M18 grip is not nearly as comfortable as the upgraded X Carry series. However, I think the Beretta APX grip is more comfortable for me personally, and I really do like the extra texture. It allows me to hold onto the gun, control that recoil better, and the Beretta actually shoots a little bit faster for me as well. So even though this has a longer grip, and uh, it has a little bit more to hold on to there. The Beretta APX is, is much more comfortable to me personally, so I can shoot it a little bit faster. Also, the trigger appears to be a little bit faster for me as well. Uh, opinions may vary on that, but I do like the uh, grip better on the APX. The only weird thing about the APX is that you know how a lot of times when you have a grip on a pistol, as you can see right here, the diameter for where the trigger reach and where the middle finger uh, would sit right underneath the trigger guard there is very similar. On the APX, they've actually kind of done away with that. As you can see here, this is where the, the uh, grip would come up and they've actually added a bunch onto the uh, trigger reach there. And for a guy like me who has uh, longer hands, I like that personally. It makes me feel more like I'm shooting a 1911 or a 2011 or even kind of a CZ uh, Shadow 2. And uh, it feels really good and, and I think that aided in the accuracy with this pistol personally. So as far as reliability goes, uh, both of these thousand round reviews are out and you can see that this one didn't have any malfunctions and this one actually had several. Uh, I had three to four malfunctions with the M18 with varying types of ammunition and one of those was Fiocchi and I forget what the other one was, maybe Seller and Bellet, I shoot a lot of each of those. And I'll be shooting a lot of PMC here in the future since I have a lot of that now too. So the SIG M18 definitely choked quite a bit. Now some would argue that this was made for the military contract so it probably likes 124 grain NATO spec and it did choke on 115 grain. However, this is the civilian version of that gun, and it's sold to civilians, and civilians predominantly use 115. Uh, if they did do that, you can change the recoil spring, and maybe it would make it more reliable. However, we had varying types of malfunctions with this as well. I can also tell you the APX was made with the military contract in mind, and it had no issues with any ammo that we put through it. Now, some of the problems that you're gonna run into on both systems. Number one is gonna be a little bit of reliability with the M18, and yes, I've seen other reviews of this gun that didn't have reliability problems. I'm happy for them, I really am. But I did see several in this gun, so it makes me lose a little bit of faith in it, especially for the price. But however, not too bad. If you consider if it was three or four malfunctions out of a thousand rounds, that's still 99.5% uh, effective. However, it makes me a little nervous, especially when there's other options out there, even like the Canic series, which are, which have been hundred percent reliable. So maybe I got a bad one, certainly possible, especially now that SIG is pumping out guns left and right, and they've become a lot more popular than they were in the past. Maybe quality control went down a little bit. It's common. And, uh, that seems like the likely uh, cause actually, because some of the older guns like the 226 or 229 series, for example, are well known for being very reliable. And I've heard good reports of the M18 and M17 from other people I know. So maybe it was a fluke, maybe not. It's hard to say. Some of the cons on the Beretta APX are going to be the looks. And to me, I'd rather be reliable and ugly than good looking and not reliable. So overall, I would say that the problems on the APX are significantly less. The real difference between the two pistols is gonna be the price. 
This pistol retails somewhere between six and eight hundred dollars, depending on where you find it. This pistol re retails for somewhere between three and four hundred dollars, depending on where you find it. So I thought it was an interesting comparison, considering this one's almost twice as much money. Do you get twice as much gun? Well, that's a, that's up to you. If you got a reliable one and you like this platform, yeah, maybe. Uh, it's got the military factor to it, which gives it kind of a second kind of cool. The gun looks cool overall. I really like how it looks. It's kind of a peanut butter brown, and it looks like a SCAR 17, SCAR 16, and I've always liked the off-color look. On top of that, it's got kind of an interesting uh, short, stout uh, Glock 45 look to it, obviously, because it's a uh, short uh, slide, long grip, and I kind of think those guns look fairly cool. The gun's in Call of Duty, so uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why you want to buy it. All that's fine. If it was reliable, I'd have no issue with the gun at all. However, again, the APX doesn't have that coolness, but what it does have is 100% reliability at half the cost. So overall, I'd have to go with the APX, even though one of the nice things about the 320 is that holsters and magazines are gonna be available, as well as accessories also. So if you plan to trick out your gun a little bit, uh, maybe then go with the M18, because if it is a recoil issue, like a recoil spring issue, you could probably get one of those for 30 bucks. And then on top of that, maybe get yourself a different set of sights, and then you'd have a rock solid pistol. However, for the price you're already paying for this out of the box, maybe look at another SIG variant if you're gonna go that route. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please buy Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.